Welcome to Tom Morgan Rodsmith. I'm Rick Plant. I'm the bamboo rod maker here at the shop. Today we're going to cover a couple things. One is we're going to talk about how we address the nodes on the strips and second is how we set up the hand mill to start the roughing process. All right, so I'm going to get set up on the hand mill on how to do the roughing of the strips. You can make an entire rod just here on the hand mill. You don't need any power equipment. The hand mill comes with four different anvils. It comes with a rough butt, a rough tip, a finished butt, and a finished tip. Since the last rod I made, uh, I have a finished butt anvil on here, so I need to change that out put my rough butt anvil so I can start the roughing process. So let me show you how that works. There's actually two ways to do it. There's 26 screws that connects the anvil to the adjustable bed. One is you can come from underneath and you can loosen, take the screws out completely. That's one way. The other way, which is the way I prefer, is there are seven screws that holds the base to the angle aluminum. And what I like to do is just take those seven screws out. Now that I've taken those screws out, I can simply lift the bed up, tilt it onto my bench, and now I have easy access to the anvil screws. I can loosen all those, take the anvil out, and put the next anvil on. Okay, so I've taken all the screws out that attaches the anvil to the adjustable bed. Now what I'm going to do is just flip it back. You can see I got it off here. We'll set that aside. We'll use that when we go to uh, finish our strips. First thing I want to do is just clean this. Make sure there's no debris. I don't want any debris between the adjustable bed and the anvil. So this is my rough butt anvil. Again, I'm going to clean the bottom of that as well. And I just wipe it with my hand. Make sure that there's no debris. Okay. Simply mounts like that. I'm going to tip this back over and I'm going to start putting the screws in. One thing about the anvils, they're made out of HDPE plastic and it is very soft and it's very um, pliable. So these are made in a shop here that's about uh, on average 68 degrees. If your shop is cooler, the anvils could shrink if it's warmer, they also could stretch. So if that's the case, if they have shrunk, you can simply heat them up uh, with a heat gun or a hair driver. They will expand a little bit and then the holes will line up perfectly. If they're too warm, I suggest you wait and maybe mount it either early in the morning or later in the evening when the temperature has cooled down. So very simply, we can take our screws and I'm going to start screwing them in. I, I do not tighten them at this stage. All right, so I snugged them all down. Now what I do, starting at the beginning, I tighten them one by one. And you do not want to over tighten these because all the pressure when you're cutting a strip is down. So you can see I basically just use about two fingers to tighten them and that's enough. If you over tighten them, you could actually pull the brass inserts out of the anvil. So don't over tighten. That's the reason why we don't give you T wrenches. We don't want you to over tighten anything. All right, next I'm gonna put the base back on the angle aluminum. Again, just like before, I'm gonna make sure that there's no debris on the base, no debris 
on my angle aluminum. Just set it on. And then I'm going to go back and put my seven screws in, attaching the base to the angle aluminum. So I've mounted my rough butt anvil. What's nice about using the Morgan hand mill, I can actually set the taper of my strip as I rough it. A lot of the power roughers that are out there um, only rough strips straight. Using the hand mill, roughing on the hand mill, I can set my taper already. So it kind of gives me a bit of a head start when I start my finished cuts. Okay, so before we can rough the strips, we need to drill a hole for the hole down screw. So what we simply do, this is just a magnetic stop on our base. And the reason I use a magnetic stop is so the hole is consistent on every strip. I just center it and drill through and that's where we're going to hold down every strip. The reason I have the base again is so the hole is consistent that way when I mill every strip they're consistent as well. Uh, we like to say that there's hundreds of ways to make a bamboo fly rod but what we're going to show you is how we do it here at the shop. So the first thing I do is I have to address the dams which is on the inside of the strip. Simply flex the strip up against our sanding disc. This is not real critical, but we do want a flat surface. So I've addressed the dams. Next I'm going to deal with the nodes on the outside. Ideally, you want a very small spot that gets sanded. About three quarters of an inch is good, half inch is better. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to flex my strip so the node is out. And I'm going to roll it on my sanding disc. The reason I roll it is because bamboo is round. This comb was about two, two and a quarter inches in diameter. So you can see here where I've sanded it, I have a very small area that I've sanded. I feel with my hand, it feels nice and flush. Next, I go to the next one. I'm going to bend it. Feel. There's a great example. That's about maybe five eighths of an inch wide. That's perfect. We also have a jig that we use, because usually when I'm sanding strips, I'm doing you know, quite a few at a time, sometimes well over 50. So this little jig again puts the node out. There you can see, nice and smooth, very narrow. So you can see right here where I've sanded the node. If I take the scale, uh, I have it, it's about three quarters of an inch wide, which would be ideal. Again, I can feel I have no high spots. The way I describe sanding the nodes in the class is sanding the nodes and preparing the nodes properly is like setting the foundation of your house. The better the foundation is, the better it is to frame, easier it is to do finish work. Same thing when you're addressing the nodes on your strip. It is extremely important. I wish somebody told me how important I was when I first started. Um, better job you do here, easier it's going to be in the entire process. All right, let's rough a strip. Uh, we recommend when you're going to rough on the Morgan hand mill that you soak your strips uh, at least overnight. 24 hours is good. Um, so if you're going to start roughing over the weekend, you know, put them in on Friday and let them soak um, till you're ready to go. We're going to take our strip out of the water. To mount, simply goes through the hole we drilled, screw it into the anvil. Okay, so as we get started, you can see the strip is really rough. All I did was split it um, so it's not a consistent size at all. I got my stop set. Plane goes down. I'm going to take a pass. You can see it's a little herky-jerky, and that's going to continue until I get a consistent cut 
all the way through the strip. So we have a saying here at the class that you're going to walk a mile six feet at a time. Depending on the time and the length of time that you've soaked your strip will determine the depth of cut that you can take. If you've allowed your strips to soak overnight or 24 hours, you can start by probably taking as much as 10 thousandths off a pass. And you will feel as you cut where the strip starts getting dry and then you just got to take a slightly smaller cut. So you can start off at 10 thousandths, maybe go to 8, 6, 4. We recommend that you rough your strips out to 100 thousandths over your final dimension. That's what we do here at the shop on all of our rods. You can see it's cutting pretty easy. That herky-jerkiness is starting to go away as I'm starting to get an even cut all the way through the strip. A couple things about proper technique when you're using the Morgan hand mill. One is, I put my right hand on the handle, I put my left hand on the plane. Uh, you don't want to put your hand over the dial because you could arbitrarily just move the dial by accident. So right hand, left hand. Next thing is you want to keep the plane out in front of you. Uh, if you get on top of it and then you start almost pulling it and it makes it much harder to plane. So as I do this, right hand, left hand, plane stays out in front of me and I push it forward. So we recommend that you rough your strips out to a hundred thousandths oversize. So I've roughed this a little bit. I need to take a measurement to see where I am. Uh, we have the measuring block. If I was making a five-sided rod, I would use the 73, four-sided one, 91. This is a six-sided rod, so I'm going to use the 61, the middle slot. Simply put your strip in the middle of the slot. Hold your cal caliper perpendicular push down and take a measurement. So you can see here, I'm sitting at 362. If that's 100 over of where I want to be, then I can simply roll up my stop, set it, lock it in place, and then as I cut every strip, I will go down to that stop and every strip will repeat. Okay, so I've taken, I don't know, three, four, five passes what, I, what I'm looking for is now, I have put a slight angle on each side of the strip. So that allows me now to take a measurement with my measuring block. Since I'm using a six-sided rod, I'm going to use the 61 degree block in the middle. If I was using a five-sided rod, I'd use the outside one at 73, four-sided rod, the inside one at 91. Simply put your measuring block on your strip, hold your caliper perpendicular, and take a reading. You can see I'm at 362. Let's say that's a hundred thousandths more than what I want for my finished strip. So now what I can do is I can roll my stop up, right, and I can lock it in place. On the first strip to get that dimension, you have to take your time and just kind of creep your way down. Don't be afraid to take a lot of measurements till you get it set to exactly where you want it. Take your time at that first strip, then set your stop and the other ones will be much quicker. So today we've gone over a number of things with the hand mill. Uh, we showed you how to change the anvil, put your rough anvil on. Uh, we went over how to address the dams on the inside of the strips, the nodes on the outside. Uh, and we got into the roughing process and how to set your stop for your roughing strip. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to give us a call here at the shop.